All right, folks, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Intercluster Lookup Service, also known as ILS. Specifically, I'll be talking about why everyone should care about the ILS feature. The most bare bones reason why people do it is because they'll have a multi-cluster environment and you know you want to share information from cluster A to cluster B and cluster C and so on and so forth. So you use intercluster lookup service in order to get these different clusters, a multi-cluster environment, all communicating with each other. But that's such a simplistic view. What we really want to know though is what are the main reasons that people configure ILS? And that'll also help us understand why we should care about it. Taking a little bit from the documentation, we can see that when the ILS is configured in multiple clusters, ILS updates Cisco Unified Communications Manager with the current status of remote clusters in the ILS network. Really just uh, Cisco documentation stating exactly what I said earlier. When you have multiple different clusters and you want to be able to share information across those clusters, ILS really can help out a lot in that area. And again, that's the general reason why people should care about ILS. That's the general reason why people should go about configuring ILS. However, I have a countdown of the top three reasons people should configure ILS. And I'm going to go from the least uh, common reason all the way to the number one top tier reason why people say, I need to have ILS. So starting out with number three, the CCMP certification. Certification in general, really, but the CCMP certification specifically calls out ILS on the CCMP blueprint. And continuing on that same path, the CCIE certification also calls out on its blueprint, ILS and GDPR and URI dialing and things of that nature, which um, are enhanced with ILS. Actually, GDPR is an enhancement of ILS. And that actually is a segue into number two, GDP and, UR, and or URI dialing. Global dial plan replication, as it's stated here, uh, allows for uh, the ILS network to share global dial plan data, such as directory URIs, E164 uh, dialing and ESN patterns, as well as PSTN failover numbers, right? So this is another direct quote from the Cisco documentation. All right, so far we've covered the general reason why people should care about ILS. And we've covered the, the number three reason why people go about configuring it, the number two reason why people go about configuring, configuring ILS. However, the number one reason, there is such a significant gap between number two and number one that it's, it's, it's almost insane how many people really truly care about number one and not so much about the other reasons. Those other reasons are true and valid, but the number one reason is Jabber, right? People want to be able to have users log into Jabber and have the Jabber client be able to dynamically identify the CUCM cluster where that user resides. ILS ILS leverages UDS, which is the user data service, um, in order to identify the home cluster for users. However, uh, it is very much so a huge part of a Jabber multi-cluster environment. Intercluster lookup service is significant for being able to deploy Jabber and have the client dynamically look up the cluster. There is a fourth reason that is, is so uncommon that I didn't really put it on the list, but we'll have it in here as some bonus material. There's something out there called proxy TFTP, which is uh, another scalable option in multi-cluster environments that allows people to be able to uh, list a single TFTP server in their uh, option 150 in DHCP or option 66. Um, and when the devices reach out to that single TFTP server, that is allowed that is able to look up files on remote clusters leaf leaf clusters for the tftp deployment um, dynamically so that way you don't have to have a tftp server listed in one dhcp scope and a different dhcp server lifted listed in a different dhcp scope um, you could simply just say in every single dhcp scope i want to list this ip address or this host name and allow for the call manager on the back end of things to sort it out what files should be delivered to what devices. Hopefully this is valuable 
to some folks out there that they, they get some sort of good information out of this. And if you did get some good information out of this, you're trying to figure out, should I use ILS? And now, if you've confirmed, I definitely want to use ILS, and you're thinking, how do I configure ILS? There's another video that I have going through the steps to configure ILS. That video is going to be in the, in the end of this video. So if, uh, that's in, if that's of interest to you, feel free to go ahead and take a look at that and let me know any feedback. Thank you for watching.